Welcome to Bhavana Society Forest Monastery Meditation Center, home of Bhante G and Bhante Silananda. Hello, my name is Marisa, and on behalf of the Bhavana Society, I'm so honored to be here with Dama Ruan performing an interview regarding practice, regarding practice as a teenager and rebirth or rebecoming. Um, Dama Ruan is a longtime student of Bhante Ji's and I believe first met Bhante Ji when he was 16. 16, yes. Yes, yes. yes. And, um, and now is a teacher who goes around all over the world teaching uh, meditation retreats. I believe in four different countries doing about 16 retreats a year. Uh, four continents. Or four continents. Uh, nine countries and uh, 16 retreats per year. That's, a, that's uh, a busy schedule. Very busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, earlier this week, Bhante introduced Dhamma Ruin to, to us to, on this retreat and um, talked about how he came to meet Dhamma Ruin, which was when uh, many years ago, Bhante Ji heard a tape of a young boy uh, chanting in Pali. And when he heard this tape, this young boy was chanting some of the most difficult sutras in Pali and Bhante Ji just knew that he had to meet this young boy. So he went to try to find this young boy three times, I believe, went to try to find him and couldn't find him in Sri Lanka. And then one day Bhante Ji was riding a train in Australia and who was he sitting by but this young boy when he was 16. So um, what are your memories of being 16 years old and meeting Bhante Ji for the first time? Well, I uh, started practicing meditation when I was uh, very, very young. I was my whole family uh, was a meditation household. I grew up in a meditation household. Uh, when I was uh, sixteen, I met uh, Bantiji for the first time, and that was uh, uh, in Australia when he has been looking for me because I chanted these uh, uh, sutras or discourses of the Buddha on meditation. From the time from age three, and uh, so Bhante was looking for this because he was very interested. And when he couldn't find me in Sri Lanka, he came to Australia for a retreat. And uh, we were going in the car, and I was told that there's a Sri Lankan monk, and someone said you should speak with him in Sh in Sinhalese because he might be uh, he might have not spoken to a Sri Lankan for a long time. So I went and I sat next to him um, and he was asking everybody have you met this child and when he turned to me uh, he didn't think that I was the child so the lady in front said uh, Bhante you are sitting next to him <laughs> so I still remember him uh, looking at me with big eyes <laughs> oh you are the one <laughs> and he was looking as if why didn't you tell me earlier so he has been my teacher for from that time onwards and uh, uh, now about 30 years practicing with Bhantiji, over 30 years. What was it like to start your practice as a, as a young person, as a teen or a youth? Yeah, there's a bit, bit of a difference uh, from uh, uh, meditating as a teenage uh, person in a non-Buddhist country. Uh, as opposed to in Asia. In Asia, it's uh, meditation is part and parcel of your daily life and you don't have any problem in uh, uh, accepting anything, it's part of the system. So if you are practicing meditation, if you are doing something like that, you are known to be a better person, better child. So all the children, uh, even my children, I have two uh, teenage children, and both of them, one uh, teach little children meditation and uh, the other one, when she was 16 years old, she gave her first Dhamma talk mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a proper retreat. As a teenage, we all go through the same uh, uh, emotions, same problems uh, uh, that's common to train teenagers. And the same battle I had to fight even at that time, even in Sri Lanka. So today teenagers have a lot of issues like uh, peer pressure, teachers pressure, parents pressure, then social pressure. 
being accepted in uh, schools and uh, with friends so so many things and with those uh, uh, teenagers have to you know, as teenagers we had to uh, uh, bring the practice in and uh, make sense out of that and we at that time uh, there was uh, very little emphasis on teaching te teenagers understanding them so most of the uh, retreats i went for my first long retreat when i was uh, uh, i think 17 or 18 and uh, it was a really hard retreat i got up uh, i was the youngest there and between my age and the others there was a huge gap i was 18 the others started around 35 40 and uh, uh, it was quite difficult because we got up at four o'clock in the morning and six weeks retreat mm. silent very strict from four o'clock till ten o'clock in the night one hour sitting one hour walking one hour sitting one hour walking and uh, there's a different type of energy as teenagers then as when you come to 28 30s 40s there's a different kind of energy uh, that you practice with so I am I know uh, that energy always when the mind wants to wander and it's different type of wandering so uh, but also one of the good things about being teenagers and practicing is that we can uh, concentrate better teenagers can concentrate better than adults because a lot of uh, adult worries are less in teenagers mind because uh, uh, whatever the problems teenagers have still they don't have to worry about money and uh, job and position in society and failure time is not really running out uh, so because of those things uh, it's easy to concentrate and better uh, it's easier to learn uh, as teenagers as well uh, because as you grow older your mind, your uh, learning power becomes uh, dull. So it's uh, because of that theory and the practice, uh, both are good at this age.